Welcome back. The time is 646. We have a live shot this morning out of Stockton, California. That's just south of Sacramento. Looks like a pallet yard is on fire this morning as firefighters battle that blaze and police oh, keep the streets here. blocked off in the area. Again, pallet yard fire in Stockton, California. Let's go ahead and dive into news. Montana Governor Steve Bullock is off and running this morning for President of the United States. MTN's Mike Dennison, who reported two weeks ago that Bullock planned to launch a presidential bid, has the details on Bullock's official announcement and the Democrats' campaign for the highest office in the land. Governor Bullock officially launched his presidential bid at 4 a.m. Mountain Time, releasing a two-minute, 44-second video that outlines his campaign themes and a declaration of his candidacy. I'm Steve Bullock, and I'm running for president. With your help, we will take our democracy back. The video focuses on Bullock's fight against corporate and dark money in campaigns, referencing the notorious past political power of Montana's Copper Kings, and says he'll fight against what he calls a corrupt system. That's why we need to defeat Donald Trump in 2020 and defeat the corrupt system that lets campaign money drown out the people's voice so we can finally make good on the promise of a fair shot for everyone. It also notes his re-election victory in a state won by Trump in 2016 and his progressive policy victories on Medicaid expansion and education spending. Bullock's also planning an event later today at Helena High School where national media will be on hand to film his encounter with students in a classroom. But once today's launch publicity subsides, Bullock has a steep hill to climb to become relevant in the presidential contest. He's the 22nd Democrat to get in the race, and observers say he'll be competing against far more experienced political hands and fundraisers. Yet he's not without some experienced hands of his own. The Hill, a D.C. publication, reported Monday that one of his top advisors worked for the presidential campaigns of Al Gore and John Edwards, and that he's being advised by Jennifer Palmieri, a director of communications for the Obama White House. He also has staffers on the ground in Iowa, site of the nation's first presidential nominating caucus next February. Bullock is being mentioned in some Democratic presidential primary polls. In an online poll completed last week by a national firm, Bullock, along with several other candidates, registered at 1%. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And MTN will have more coverage later today on Governor Bullock's presidential campaign launch and another big campaign announcement this week. Not only Helena, not only Billings, not only Missoula, not only Great Falls. Montana needs representation. And I'm going to go there. I'm going to visit with them. I'm going to listen to them. And I'm going to take their issues and make their issues my issues for Washington. Helena Mayor Wilmot Collins officially launched a campaign for Senate Monday in downtown Helena. He is the first Democrat candidate to file for the race. If he wins the nomination, he will likely face Republican Senator Steve Daines. Collins gained national attention in 2017 when he won the race for mayor, becoming Montana's first African-American mayor. Collins came to Montana in the 1990s as a refugee from the Civil War in Liberia. Collins says his campaign will focus on issues like reforming the campaign finance system System, expanding health care coverage and improving veterans services. The Montana Republican Party released a statement on Collins entering the Senate race. Party Chair Deborah Lamb said Wilmot Collins is just another liberal Democrat who will be a rubber stamp for the far left's radical agenda. Collins will stand against President Trump every chance he gets and reverse all that we've accomplished these last few years. Montana, along with 43 other states and territories, have filed a lawsuit alleging price fixing among more than 100 different generic drugs. The lawsuit claims a broad conspiracy among 20 generic drug manufacturers to manipulate prices and reduce competition. According to the Montana Department of Justice, the drugs cover all types of classes from capsules to ointments, antibiotics to contraceptives. And in some cases, the DOJ says coordinated price increases were over 1,000 percent. The lawsuit seeks damages, civil penalties, and court orders to restore competition to the generic drug market. The Billings Public Works Department is proposing raising water rates come July 1st. The proposal would increase the water rate for an average single-family home by about $4.62 a month. The average wastewater bill for the same household would increase by $1.43. The city sent a letter to Billings residents a few days ago detailing reasons for the increase. This comes after the city conducted a water and wastewater rate study to review the cost of providing consistent service to Billings residents. 
residents. One of the driving factors is the construction of an upcoming West End water reservoir and treatment plant. Currently, Billings is serviced by one plant that the city says is aging and sometimes goes offline multiple times per month. During the high demand summer months, if the plant goes down, Billings only has about 8 to 10 hours of fresh water before parts of the city will run dry. Members of the public are encouraged to attend a public comment meeting on May 28th at 5.30 in the City Council Chambers. And written comments can also be submitted to the Mayor, City Council, City Clerk or the Public Works Department. Authorities have released the name of a 53-year-old Billings man who died after crashing his motorcycle west of Billings over the weekend. Yellowstone County Coroner Cliff Mahoney says Richie Klein died from head trauma. The Montana Highway Patrol says Klein was speeding on Nibiro Road around 1.30 Sunday morning when he failed to negotiate a curve. His Harley-Davidson went off the road and rolled. Klein was pronounced dead on scene. Troopers at the scene say Klein was not wearing a helmet and speed was a factor. Well, there is frustration across the state as Governor Steve Bullock says no to a popular drunk driving bill. The Yellowstone County attorney is speaking out furious as Bullock vetoes the bill to require mandatory prison time for fifth time DUI offenders. However, the governor believes the approach of the bill, which passed the House with overwhelming majority, is not the right approach. Q2's Andrea Lutz tells us how lawmakers and supporters plan to move forward. At a time when Montana's DUIs were among the highest in the country, Governor Steve Bullock took office as then Attorney General. Most can agree Montana's drunk driving epidemic needs change. But they need to be dealt with. And this, what we currently have, isn't doing it. So this session, freshman Republican Representative Bill Mercer launched a bill to make prison time a part of mandatory punishment for those who get their fifth DUI. This legislation was designed to say public safety demands that we treat this person differently than we did in those initial four attempts to try to modify behavior. His bill had the support from the House and Senate and Yellowstone County Attorney Scott Twido. These are the functioning drunk drivers. They are, <laughs> their BACs are not like around the threshold level. They're like three, four, five times the level. Many were sure the legislation would also get the signature from Governor Bullock, but it didn't. Bullock says the cases of DUI offenders go to the Montana Department of Corrections, where each case is handled differently. In most cases, treatment is the focus. And Bullock says the evidence-based intervention is working, with DUIs at a four-year downward trend. Where are you going to draw the line? Still, Twido and Mercer believe it's not enough. I mean, this seemed like a very rational point to say this is a person who's already failed to modify behavior after four previous attempts. If the fifth and sixth DUIs are too low a threshold to, to require some term at state prison, then what is it? While Bullock says more can be done to curb Montana's drunk driving problem, he says this bill was a step backward from criminal justice reform. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Bullock also says there's no evidence showing prison sentences do much to discourage crimes. He said increasing the severity of punishment is ineffective in these cases. As the number of whooping cough cases in Missoula County continue to rise, the Missoula Health Department says they're looking to hire up to six new nurses to help with the outbreak. There are now over 100 confirmed cases in 18 schools across the county. The county is seeing up to 15 new cases a day. It's definitely still spreading. We're definitely seeing it all over the community. Um, we're just hoping that we can get through the end of the school year and get these kids not congregating all in one room, coughing on each other, and then maybe we can start to see a decline. The sickness has reached every age group with almost 2,000 identified close contacts. Montana may hold the next housing facility for unaccompanied migrant children. The Department of Health and Human Services is now considering Maelstrom Air Force Base in Great Falls as a temporary emergency evacuation shelter for children who enter the U.S. illegally without a parent or guardian. Maelstrom would only be used in emergency situations if there is an urgent need for space, such as a natural disaster. HHS says it will not impact military readiness.
One of Billings' iconic downtown buildings is the new planned home for Big Sky Economic Development. BSED announced Monday that its board has chosen the Montana National Bank on North Broadway Street for its new location. A grant still has to be secured from the Federal Economic Development Association before it can become reality. If it does, the plans would be to turn the building into a one-stop business and community economic development hub. Other partners are saying, hey, we want to grow uh, entrepreneurship in our community. And so we're, we're doing that in a big way. And we think the facility will help us have a more forward-facing approach and be more proactive with growing jobs organically in our community through stronger resources uh, for entrepreneurship. The total cost of the project would be about $4 million, with $2 million of that dependent on a grant from the federal EDA.